Hello, and welcome to part six of the Gospel-Based Parenting video series. If you have not done so already, I would highly encourage you to go back and check out part one, the introduction, part two, what does the Bible say about spanking, part three, what is the biblical rod, part four, how should we interpret Proverbs, part five, who is the child in the book of Proverbs, and today, in part six, we will be answering the question, what is discipline? At this point in my parenting journey, I had come to the conclusion that I had no biblical basis for hitting my children. And as I shared my newfound insights with my family and friends, the very first question they often asked me was, then how will you discipline? It was almost as though they assumed that if I wasn't spanking my kids, then that meant that I wasn't going to be disciplining them at all. But I could not deny the plethora of scriptures that talk about discipline. For example, Proverbs 29:17 says, "Discipline your children, and they will give you peace. They will bring you the delights you desire." You see, we often use the phrases spanking and discipline interchangeably, but they are not the same thing. Spanking is not discipline, and discipline is not spanking. But even the word spanking has different meanings for different people. Some people, like myself, would have said that they had a positive experience with spanking. Perhaps your parents or grandparents or foster parents or aunts or uncles calmly sat you down and discussed with you in a gentle voice why they were going to hit you. Perhaps they only hit you once or twice on the butt, so it wouldn't hurt too bad, but hurt just enough. Perhaps they even told you, as my father told me, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Perhaps they hugged you or kissed you after they hit you. Perhaps they held your hands and prayed with you after they hit you. Perhaps they reminded you that they only hit you because they love you. Or perhaps you had a negative experience with spanking. Perhaps your parents or grandparents or foster parents, aunts or uncles yelled or screamed or cursed while they hit you. Perhaps they hit you so many times that you lost count. Perhaps they were abusive, leaving welts and bruises on your body. Perhaps they hit you while they were drunk or on drugs. Perhaps they hit you in public, in front of everyone, leaving you feeling embarrassed and vulnerable. Perhaps you feared for your life. You see, parenting is a giant toolbox, and spanking is just one of the many tools that parents have used throughout the ages. While I do not know anyone particularly that enjoys using that tool, it is important to acknowledge that it is a tool nonetheless. And there are different ways to use different tools, just like there are different ways to use the same tool. After all, the same hammer that drives in the nail is the same hammer that pulls it out, nevertheless always leaving a hole. So whether you would say you had a positive spanking experience or a negative one, it's important to reflect on your own experiences because those experiences have helped shape you into the person that you are today. They have helped to form your beliefs about others and yourself. They have helped to build your character for better or for worse. Before we move forward in this series, it's important for us to define our terms. Just like the word spanking has different meanings for different people, the word discipline has different meanings for different people too. And I want to make sure that we're on the same proverbial page. So I want you to think about what each of these words mean to you. Discipline, reproof, train, instruct, teach, and correct. Do not use a dictionary. I want you to pause this video, grab a piece of paper, and actually write down your own definitions of each of these words in your own words. If you are not sure what a word means, that is totally okay. Just try your best. This is not a test or a quiz. This is an opportunity for you to examine your own beliefs about discipline. So go ahead and pause the video while you write down your own definitions, and I'll be here once you finish. <laughs> A 
Okay, great. At this point, you should have the definitions for discipline, reproof, train, instruct, teach, and correct on a piece of paper. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the dictionary definition for each of these terms, and let's see how your definitions compare. Discipline. The dictionary defines discipline as training to act in accordance with rules, activity that develops or improves a skill to bring to a state of order and obedience by training. When I first did this exercise, I noticed that I interpreted the word discipline as punishment, but the reality is that discipline simply means training. This is why we think of our brave men and women in uniform as highly disciplined people. They're trained to follow strict orders. They develop and cultivate the skills necessary for battle, and they thrive in an environment of order and obedience. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Discipline your son, for there is hope. Do not set your heart on putting him to death. In light of what we've already learned about spanking, I think that we can view this verse about discipline in a different light. Notice that this verse also comes from the book of Proverbs, which, as we mentioned before, is not a parenting book. Also notice that it uses the generic term son and not the age-specific term nar. And we can also notice that the verse says, do not set your heart on putting him to death. Now, this is a super weird phrase to add if we're to assume that this verse is talking about disciplining a young child. Jewish parents were never instructed to kill their own children. But as we mentioned before, convicted criminals were often put to death for punishment for their sins and for their crimes. Reproof. Now, this is a word that I had heard before used in church, but I wasn't quite sure how to define it. It's not a word that we commonly use, so I was definitely curious to see what the dictionary definition was, and I was so surprised by what I found. The dictionary defines reproof as to criticize or correct, especially gently. So often when we think of criticizing and correcting, it's connected to harshness and not gentleness. I love that the dictionary emphasizes that reproof is gentle, criticism and correction. And surprise, we find the word reproof in one of our four spanking verses, again, also from the book of Proverbs. Chapter 29, verse 15 says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Train. To train means to develop or form the thoughts, habits, or behavior by discipline and instruction. To make proficient by instruction and practice. Similar to how an athlete trains for their sport, we also have the privilege of training our children. I love that the dictionary definition emphasizes that training begins by developing or forming our thoughts first, because our thoughts will ultimately determine our habits and our behavior. Two words that stuck out to me from this definition were instruction and practice. If we could do something perfectly, then we wouldn't really need to practice it much. We practice things that we want to improve, and this is good news. That means that we have the rest of our lives to continue training, practicing right alongside of our children to become better human beings. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. The other word that stuck out to me in the definition of train was instruct. Instruct means to impart knowledge to furnish with knowledge, to teach, to educate. As someone who's devoted the majority of my life to teaching and instruction, I love that this is also my call as a parent, and not just my profession. We as parents are called to instruct our children, to share our knowledge and wisdom with them. And this is a huge part of what it means to discipline. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Ephesians 6, 4. Notice the connection between discipline and instruction. Teach. This word is similar to instruct in that it also means to impart knowledge or skill. So that means that we are not just simply called to instruct our children in thoughts or ideas, but we're also called to teach them real life skills. It's not just about head knowledge. It's also about heart knowledge and hand knowledge. Deuteronomy 6-7 says, You shall teach them the laws of God, 
diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. So basically, we teach our children all the time. I may be a teacher by profession, but I love to remind my students' parents that they are their child's first and forever teacher, and what a privilege it is to be one. Correct. The dictionary defines to correct as to point out errors or faults. Proverbs 29.17 says, Correct your son, and he will give you comfort. He will also delight your soul. It can be easy to view correction as something negative. Most people struggle when other people point out their errors or faults. At least I know I do. This verse says that the result of correcting our children is that they will give us comfort and delight our souls. Correction is not a bad thing, but there is a difference when we choose to correct with compassion instead of condemnation. As I was looking up the meaning for all these different words that seem connected to the concept of discipline in the Bible, I was reminded of 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for everything, for every good work. Does that look familiar to you? All the things that God instructs us to do to our children are all the things that God says the scriptures do for us. God our Father, the only perfect parent, has not left us alone in this endeavor to discipline our children. What a beautiful reminder for us to continually point our children and ourselves back to the word of God, as the ultimate source for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. And this concludes part six of the Gospel-Based Parenting video series. If you've not done so already, please be sure to go back and check out part one, the introduction, part two, what does the Bible say about spanking, part three, what is the biblical rod, part four, How should we interpret wisdom literature like the Proverbs? Part 5, who is the child mentioned in the book of Proverbs? And today, in part 6, we answered the question, what is discipline? And in part 7, as we seek to better understand how we should discipline our own children, we'll begin by answering the question, how does God, our Heavenly Father, discipline us? As I mentioned before, this video series is based on my book, Gospel-Based Parenting, which is available for purchase on Amazon.com. You can also download a free copy of my book from my website, www.peacefulworldschoolers.com. Every chapter includes a list of reflection and application questions that are meant to inspire discussions between you and your spouse, your small group, or even your church. These discussions are so important and will help you to reflect on your own personal experiences, analyze your own biases or preconceived ideas, and apply biblical truths in a way that will transform your family as you live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you have enjoyed this video series so far, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you'll be able to continue to receive updates on my latest videos.